Welcome to Kids Cove News. We have so many exciting things coming up that we want to tell you about today. That's right. Next week is game day in Kids Cove, where we are all invited to wear our favorite team jersey or team colors to Sunday school. Or as we watch iCampus Kids, we'll have hot dogs for breakfast and a special snack for all of our preschoolers. And if you're here with us in person, Coach Bobcat will be joining us in person to yes. get us pumped up. <laughs> well, I think we're already pumped up. We're yes. so excited. It's going to be such an exciting day. You just have to be here with us next week. That's right. And you know what else? Boys and girls, our scripture memory celebration is coming up soon. And you still have time to finish your verses. I know many of you are working so very hard to commit those scriptures to memory. And we want to celebrate that. Yes, we do. And we even have our scripture memory books online for those who are watching with us on iCampus Kids. If you need a scripture memory book in person or online, let us know so you can say your verses and be a part of our scripture memory celebration. It's not too late to finish or catch up. Remember, all your verses need to be completed through the month of April to receive your very own trophy. And sixth graders will receive a new Bible with their name engraved on it too. We also have Parents' Night Out, Preteen Bible Study, and the Daddy-Daughter Gala coming up next week too. And we have so much to share with you about Kids Camp too, but you'll have to stay tuned to hear more. <laughs> That's, That's a wrap, wrap for, for Kids, Kids Cove News. News. See you next week for, for Game, Game Day. Hi Campus Kids, my name is Yancey and I can't wait to sing and worship with you today. You know, the God we serve is the very best and I want to encourage you, don't let anything distract you or keep you from giving him the praise that he deserves. Let's go!
friends. Welcome to iCampus Kids. I'm Miss JJ, your Bible teacher, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. The Bible is God's Word. God helps men write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We have started to consider the big question. What is God like? We are learning that God is holy, good, and loving. God's holiness means that He is perfect and set apart from everything else. Nothing in creation is like God. God is good. He is righteous and just. He never makes mistakes. He is completely fair. God is loving. He is kind to us and wants the best for us. God loved the Israelites even though they struggled to trust and obey Him. God freed His people from slavery in Egypt. He provided for them in the wilderness. He took them to the land He promised them. And yet, the people did not believe God would give them the land. God told them they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years because of their disbelief and disobedience. The people were going to die in the wilderness, and only their children would enter the land with Joshua and Caleb. The people had sinned, and sin has consequences. It is always best to obey God. We've read many things God told His people to do. It was very important for the people to obey God completely. We're going to play a game where you have to listen and obey. We're going to play Simon Says, except I'm going to call it Miss JJ Says. I will say something to do, and you obey only when the sentence starts with the words Miss JJ Says. Don't obey when the sentence does not start with Miss JJ Says. Are you ready? Miss JJ Says, stand up. Sit down. Miss JJ didn't say to sit down. You should still be standing up. Miss JJ says, jump with both feet. Miss JJ says, hop on one foot. Stop hopping. Did you stop? Miss JJ didn't say to stop. Wave your hands in the air. Oh, Miss JJ didn't say to wave your hands. You should still be hopping on one foot. Okay, Miss JJ says, stop hopping. Miss JJ says, spin in a circle. Stop spinning. Miss mm, JJ didn't say, you should be spinning. Miss JJ says, wave your hands in the air. Miss JJ says, stop and sit down. Great job playing, Miss JJ says. Today, we're going to read about some instructions God gave Moses, and we will see if Moses followed the instructions completely. What do you think? Raise your hand if you think Moses obeyed God. Okay, raise your hand if you think Moses did not obey God. All right, let's read and find out. We're going to read from the book of Numbers. Numbers is the fourth book in the Old Testament and is a book of the law. Numbers records true things that really happened with real people. At this point in history, the Israelites had been wandering through the wilderness because they didn't obey God and take the land He had promised to give them. Let's read and see what happened. I'm going to read Numbers 20 verses 2 through 12. While I read, listen for what God told Moses to do and for what Moses did. Give a thumbs up if you hear Moses obeying. Give a thumbs down if you hear Moses disobeying. The people didn't have any water, so they gathered together to oppose Moses and Aaron. They argued with Moses. They said, We wish we had died when our people fell dead in front of the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's people into this desert? We and our livestock will die here. Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? Why did you bring us to this terrible place? It doesn't have any grain or figs. It doesn't have any grapes or pomegranates. There isn't even any water for us to drink. Moses and Aaron left the people. They went to the entrance of the tent of meeting. There they fell with their faces to the ground. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, Get your walking stick. You and your brother Aaron gather the people together. Then speak to that rock while everyone is watching. It will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community. 
then they and their livestock can drink it. So Moses took the walking stick from the tent. He did just as the Lord had commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the people together in front of the rock. Moses said to them, Listen, you who refuse to obey, do we have to bring water out of this rock for you? Then Moses raised his arm. He hit the rock twice with his walking stick. Water poured out, and the people and their livestock drank it. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. He said, You did not trust in me enough to honor me. You did not honor me as the holy God in front of the Israelites. So you will not bring this community into the land I am giving them. Well, did you give a thumbs up or a thumbs down? The people were thirsty. God told Moses to speak to the rock and God would provide water from the rock. At first, Moses got a thumbs up. Verse nine says, Moses did just as the Lord had commanded him. But then Moses hit the rock instead of speaking to it, thumbs down. Let's review more of the details. We're going to play, who did that? I'm going to say something that might have happened in the passage. You show me who did it by doing the correct motion. If the answer is God, stand up straight. If the answer is Moses, sit down. If the answer is the people, stand with your arms out and turn around. If what I say did not happen in the passage at all, stand like a big letter X. Who complained about being thirsty? Stand with your arms out and turn around. The people complained about being thirsty. Who did the people complain to about being thirsty? Sit down. The people complained to Moses. Who did Aaron and Moses go to after the people complained? Stand up straight. Moses and Aaron went to the tent of meeting. That was the tabernacle, the place where God chose to dwell with his people. Who knew how to get water for the people? Stand up straight again. God knew what they should do. God knows everything. Who did God tell to speak to a rock in order to get water? Sit down. God told Moses to speak to the rock and water would come out of it. Who made the water come from the rock? Ooh, this might be a tricky one. Who really made the water come out? Did Moses do it when he hit the rock or did God do it? Stand up straight. God made the water come out of the rock. Moses did not have the power to do that on his own. God made the water come out when Moses hit the rock. Who did the right thing during the entire time we read about today? Stand up straight again. God did. God was the only one who did the right thing. Moses sinned by not speaking to the rock. The people sinned and how they handled their problem of needing water. God always does the right thing. Who was told he couldn't go into the promised land because of what he did with the rock? Sit down. That was Moses. Moses disobeyed. And because of that, he could not go into the land God had promised to give the people. Great job playing. Who did that? Moses disobeyed God and did not enter the promised land. All of us have disobeyed God by sinning and cannot enter God's kingdom on our own. But God gave his son, Jesus. Jesus always obeys God. When we trust in Jesus, we enter God's kingdom and live with him forever. Now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder. The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on pink. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, why did Moses get such a harsh punishment for hitting the rock? Numbers 20 verse 12 records, but the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. He said, you did not trust in me enough to honor me. You did not honor me as the holy God in front of the Israelites. So you will not bring this community into the land I am giving them. There was something in Moses' disobedient heart or in the way he hit the rock twice that showed he did not believe what God had said. There was unbelief. He didn't fully trust God. Also, 
by disobeying God, Moses did not honor God. Moses did not show God's holiness to the people. His actions did not show the people how set apart God is. I also wonder about Moses' words when he hit the rock. Verse 10 records Moses saying, Do we have to bring water out of this rock for you? Was Moses saying he himself was bringing water from the rock? Moses wasn't going to bring water out of anything. He didn't have the power to do that. God was going to provide the water through God's power. Was Moses taking credit for God's power and provision? Here's what I know for sure. Moses did not fully trust God, and he misrepresented God to the people. I also know that God is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. God knew all the details, including what was going on in Moses' mind and heart. God is a righteous judge. The consequence for Moses' sin was right, because God is always right. God is holy, good, and loving. He deserves to be obeyed. God is so gracious. He didn't kill all the people right away for complaining again. And he didn't kill Moses right away for directly disobeying him. If we kept on reading, we would see in Numbers 27 that God allowed Moses to stand on a mountain and look at the wonderful land he was giving the people. God's mercy toward the people and Moses points to God's mercy towards us. God sent Jesus to die on the cross and rise again so our sins can be forgiven. And those who trust in Jesus will one day go to a wonderful land He has promised. Have you trusted in Jesus? Let's pray. Holy Father, we praise You because You are holy, good, and loving. You are set apart, different from everything else. You are righteous, always right. You are loving and gracious toward us. Please help us to trust and obey You. Help us to show others how holy you are and how we live our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I've loved studying God's Word with you today. There's so much more for us to learn together. Be sure to join me next time on iCampus Kids. I'm Hey Ya. Hey Ya. And I've got a question for you. Can somebody tell me what's cooler than being cool? Oh, it's ice cold. Turn to your neighbor and say, ice cold. All right. Okay, one more time. What's cooler than being cool? That's right. It's ice cold. Now, I need some help from you. So can everybody stand up? Because when Hey Ya travels, I like to drive the bus, okay? All right. I like to drive the bus. So can somebody say, drive the bus? Okay. Help me out and be my echo. When I say drive the bus, oh, that was good. All right, everybody. If you're ready, say we're ready. Somebody say drive the bus. Drive the bus, drive the bus, drive the bus. All right, let's get out our bus keys. Okay, uh-oh, there's a mess. So you know what we gotta do? We gotta shake them, shake them, shake them. Okay, let's start the bus. Somebody say drive the bus, drive the bus, drive the bus, drive the bus. Okay, friends, we drive our bus from east, west, east. West, east, west, come on. East, west, somebody say drive the bus. Drive the bus, drive the bus. All right, you guys did a great job. Go ahead and have a seat. All right, sin is a very tough word. And there was this one time when I was in downtown and I had to cross the road, but there were no cars in the street. So I ran across the road real quickly. They call that jaywalking. Would you say that I sinned? What if I took a few extra paper clips from the drawer at work? Would you say that was a sin? What if I got angry at somebody or lied to somebody? Would you say that was a sin? We think some sins are bigger and worse than other sins. The truth comes from the Bible and tells us that all have sinned and all fall short of God's glory. All sins are serious and are us thinking we can do it all on our own. You know, sin is when we turn our back on God. We are rebelling against God. 
Now it would be fair if God gave us what we deserve and poured out his wrath on us. So we have to be careful and remember who gives us everything we need. God provides for us and he equips us. Do you like to dance? Do you like the dance moves that Heya has? You do? I <laughs> will. All right. Well, thank you. I've been working on these for a long time. And you know what? I've gotten pretty good, and I know that I'm pretty special. <laughs> I think that I'm the greatest dancer ever. And I've done so much to make me the best dancer ever. <laughs> All right. Hmm. You know, oops. That's how it happens. And we forget who gave us all that we have and who equipped us for this time right now. Moses and Aaron had a similar situation where they said, must we bring water out of this rock for you? They sinned by not giving God the credit for the miracle that he told them to do. He equipped and prepared them and told them what to do. Water flowed from the rock even though Moses sinned and was disobedient. God is a God of mercy and of grace, and he cares for us so much. I am so thankful that God gave Heya dance moves and that he equips all of us for so much more. Let's all remember who cares for us and who loves us so much. Now, how are you going to thank God this week? I'm gonna thank him lots, and I hope I'll see you guys next week and we can talk about all the thankfulness that you gave to God. I'll see you soon, peace. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you had just a great time listening to our Bible lesson with Miss JJ and that you had fun with Hey Ya and singing with Yancey. Today, we have an arts and crafts project to do together. And Miss Ashley, you know I just love arts and crafts. Oh yeah, that's right, Miss Shelley. In today's Bible lesson, we learned that God is holy, good, and loving. So we get to make a craft together today to remind us how amazing God is. So we've gathered some different colors of construction paper, some markers, scissors, some yarn, and a hole punch. Yes. So if you have these things at home, you can do this with us too. Okay, great. So first, I'm going to choose purple because you know purple is my favorite color, <laughs> Shelly. Did you know that? I knew that you'd pick purple. So we're going to make a few different shapes today. Our first shape we want to make is a circle. We're going to cut out a circle like this and write the word God on it. For okay, so write God on our circle. So next, we want to choose a color to make the shape of a cross. And we're going to write the word holy on it. Miss Shelley, what does holy mean exactly? Holy means perfect or set apart. You know, God is perfect in every way and he is the one true God. Mm -hmm. So next, let's pick a color to make a star. That's perfect. How about yellow? Yellow is a great color for a star. So my star is a little crooked. It's far from perfect. But this time, we are going to write the word good on it. Miss Shelley, what does it mean for God to be good? You know, Miss Ashley, everything that God does is for His glory and our good. God is always right in all that He does. He never makes a mistake. You're right, and I love that. Okay, last shape. Let's pick a color to represent a heart. <laughs> Did you know there is a trick to cutting out hearts? <laughs> I know, I think so. You know, perfect. You know there's a trick to cutting out hearts. You can fold your paper in half and cut it mm -hmm. just like this. Yeah. Except I don't have any red paper, but that's okay. I'm gonna use the blue. Okay, here you go. Here's some scissors. And we'll cut it. Perfect, and I've already cut mine out. And I did the same trick. You Fold did? it in half. And then you cut it. And then when you open it, you have two of the very same on both sides. Look at yes. that. It's equal. You <laughs> did a great job. Okay, so for this one, let's write the word love. L-O-V-E, love. 
You know, the Bible tells us that God is love. And we love because He first loved us. God is so kind and He always wants what is best for us. Okay, so we have all of our shapes. So next, we want to punch a hole in the top and the bottom of all of the shapes. And then, once you have a hole in all your shapes, you can string some yarn through it and so we can hang it up all together. Okay, how are you doing, Miss Shelly, with your hole punch? She went well. Right, and I will cut some string for you. Okay. So we can string it together. And then when you hang it up, you can be reminded that God is good, He is holy, and God is Start stringing these three. We can work together. That sounds good. So when you string it, mm -hmm. you line them up just like yeah. this. And it says, God is holy, mm -hmm. he is good, and he is love. Mm -hmm. See, it just threads on the back. Show yeah. on the back so they can Perfect. See. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. Okay. Great job, Very boys good. and girls. God is holy. He is good and He is loving. You know, in our lesson today, Moses disobeyed God. And you know what, boys and girls? Because of sin, we disobey God too. But Jesus has always obeyed God, no matter what. And because of that, we can trust Jesus. We can choose to make Him the boss of our lives. Boys and girls, if you would like to pray to become a Christian today, go to firstdallas.org slash iCampusKids and scroll down to watch the gospel presentation. And let us know at children at firstdallas.org if that is something you did today for the very first time. So we can celebrate with you and send you some resources about what it means to be a Christian and trust Jesus. Boys and girls, put this craft we made today somewhere in your room or even on your refrigerator or your bathroom mirror so you can be reminded that God is holy, He is good, and He is loving. He alone deserves all our praise. So let's close with one more song of worship with Yancey today. We'll, we'll see, see you next week on iCampus Kids. You know, no matter what is going on in our life, we can always choose to give God praise, to celebrate what he has done, and just to make him loud. That's one of my favorite things to do. I want to invite you to sing this song with me today. Our God is big. He is strong. He's oh so wonderful. So come on, let's sing his praise together. My God is strong. He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible for a super wonderful God. Every day I can know God is always there for me and my family. Every day I can know creative is the one who lives inside me. Super big, super strong, super Show
praise you, God. That was so good.